Hey everyone, it's Rebecca. I hope you are doing wonderful this first full weekend of a new year and a new decade. I am back today for day four, four already, of our daily creative practice. Getting into the routine of getting into your creative space every day and just creating something. Doesn't matter what it is, anything goes. So I'm just letting you into my world and into my studio to see what I am up to. But you can just, I know there's a couple of you that are just getting your own materials and turning on this and listening to this and playing with me in your studio while I am playing in mine. So it doesn't make a difference if you do exactly what I do. You can do whatever your heart desires. Um, so I'm making an altered book this first month of this uh, practice. And I'd love for you to join me if you're if you're thinking about you don't have an idea of what to do. You can certainly join me in making a book or you can use all of the things I'm going to be sharing with you. You can use all of them in any other kind of art for mixed media, any kind of bookmaking, any kind of art that you do, canvas art even. Today we're going to talk a little bit about portals, um, places to go through. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do, especially in an altered book, is to make little paste places, cut out little holes and little places where I can put pictures. So today I have this one. I just glued two different of these beautiful papillons uh, from the graphics fairy. Don't you just love her images? And if you, if you haven't checked her out, it's graphicsfairy.com. Go check out because she gives at least one free graphic every single day, seven days a week. 365 and 366 days a year. So go check that out. So this is one I downloaded from her site. And I am just going to make a nice little portal in here to take my papillons. And I thought this was cute because it says a few of the girls. But I want to show you what I do. I've already I pre did this so I could go ahead and do the cutting. But I like to, when I'm making portals, I like to glue several sheets together. And I want to show you the best way I have found to do that. Let me clip back here into the back and just find a place to make a few of those. Okay, so I really like to use, when I'm doing an altered book, I like to use this glue stick, a glue stick, because I find that it doesn't make the paper wrinkle so much. Some papers don't wrinkle, but a lot of book papers will wrinkle. So I just find it easier to use this glue stick because it's, it's kind of a dry adhesive. It's not totally what you would call a dry adhesive, but it's drier than a lot. And I just go ahead and put it on every place, especially being close to the edges. Then I fold my page over and I take a bone folder and just burnish it down. Let me get this out of my way so I don't cut myself on camera. That wouldn't be fun. Miss Messy, I am. So just glue a few pages together. I like to do, when I'm doing a portal, I don't like to do any less than about four pages. So... Let me just continue here, and if you don't have a bone folder as a burnishing device, you can certainly use like an old credit card, you can use a spoon, you can use a ruler. You, heck, I've even, when I can't find my bone folder, have used my scissors to do it. Just anything that will smooth this down and let you have a really nice surface to work on. And as you saw, I worked from the back toward the front. I don't like to start this way and flip the pages. I like to come this direction. It just seems to work easier for me. So... 
I hope that helps. And let's get back here. I just this book. The more I got into this book, the more I am loving all of the titles and all the chapter titles and the words. It's just going to be a really cool book when I get finished with it. It's called A Few of the Girls, so I think that's going to be the theme of this book. It's going to be a very girly, girly, girly book. So I hope you all will enjoy that. Okay, let me get back to this. Now, I was hoping that might be just a little smaller than that. So, anyway, I want what I, I want my portal to be is smaller than the image that I am going to show through the portal. And a lot and a lot of times I will leave like a bigger edge on this so I can get all of it. I didn't think about that today. <laughs> so, we're just going to go with what we've got. But the first thing you do is just kind of, you don't have to do any measuring per se, but you kind of have to decide where you want it. And I think I'm going to do mine a little side goggled. And what I'm going to do is just take a ruler and get a pen of some sort, pencil, whatever, and make some marks going to make some just a little bit smaller than what I'm doing here. And I'm going to scoot that up just a little bit. I probably got my head in the way so you can see my nice head full of gray strained hairs and put that that way and I think that will work if I can hide all of those edges. with that. So I'm going to cut just to the inside of these. So let me just draw some lines. And really doing it with a Sharpie isn't the best thing to be doing. I, I usually use watercolor pencils whenever I'm making lines because those always erase with water. So that always is a good habit to get into, but I don't have mine close here today, so I don't want to take time to walk over to the other side of my studio, good heavenly days, all the way over there, at least five feet, and get that. So anyway, I think you kind of see what I'm doing here. It's got to be smaller than this. So, just so I do not cut through the entire book or places I don't want. I'm using a glass mat, but you could use anything sturdy. You could use a cutting mat that's actually made for cutting to do this, but I'm just going to use this today. The most important thing is to have a sharp blade in your craft knife. And I like to do it with a, I like to do my cutting along a sharp edge, and I like it to be a metal edge. If you use a wooden ruler, sometimes you will cut into the ruler itself and you won't get so straight. And one of my secrets, my very secrets, bookmaking secrets about uh, cutting is don't try to bear down real hard and cut it all in one swoop. It's much easier to do three or four passes to get where you want to go than to do it really, really hard. Because what I find in that instance, see that didn't go, but I've got two or three layers there. What I find happens to me when I'm doing that sort of thing is if I'm pressing real hard is my knife can slip and I can cut something I do not want to cut. So, let the tool do the work. I think I've got a hunk of glue in there that's preventing me from doing this really smoothly. And that's what happens. So, just keep checking, and you can see, yeah, the back doesn't look nearly as good as the front does because I had a little bit of glue in there. So just take your time and be patient and make your cuts. And we're going to come back and do something else over the top of this at some point in time. 
not quite all the way through. So just take your time and don't hurt yourself. I have been known to have to make a trip to the hospital every now and then when I've got an exacto or a craft knife in my hand. Yep. I have done that. And of course, you know that we're not about perfect. This is not in any way, shape, or form about being perfect. And that's something I can show you right here. You could make a portal that has an opening. You could do that if you wanted to, that you have to open back and forth. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to go ahead and make it all the way. And you see, it didn't take too long to just take my time and come down through there gently without I'm not I'm not putting any pressure on this at all not any more pressure than I would on a pencil or a pen and there you go it's out make sure you save that for something later that you will want to do and that's going to look pretty good in there isn't it yeah I love that Awesome. So let me get my glass tray out of the way. And let's talk about how we're going to put that in there. And one of the most fun ways to do that is with washi tape. Because that gives you a little more um, oomph and a little more um, design elements on your page. If I can find some washi tape while I'm sitting here, it should be right here on my desk, but darn it, it doesn't seem to be. I apologize. This is my own homemade washi tape. I love to make my own and wind it around old wooden spools. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Which one, which way do I want this? I think I'm gonna put that one toward the front. So let me just get some of my homemade washi tape and get little pieces off here too. I fix my papillon. Oops. That's me having all kinds of trouble. Let me make sure that's in a good spot. That's a little. I'm going to move it a little bit. Get it close to center. That's a little bit better. And get some more of my washi tape and finish this little experiment here. Oh, I'm just tearing it today. <laughs> it is one of those days. One of those Rebecca days. You just kind of always have to have a sense of humor when you're in your studio because you never know what's going to go wrong or what's going to go right. Anyway, that's kind of in there. It's kind of a, an angle, too, so I like that. I'm just going to leave it. I think that's pretty cool. That is pretty darn cool. And if you want, someday I will show you how to make your own washi tape because that's really a fun thing to do and especially if you have I, I have collected for years these old um, thread spools and never really knew what I was going to do with them until I decided to make my own washi tape and that was that was really a good thing that was one of my biggest posts a year or so ago was 
a handful of washi tape on um, Instagram. People love that. It came up in my um, top nine for the year this year. So what are we going to do with that? We certainly don't want to leave that frame around there like that, do we? Nope. We don't. So there are several things we could do. We could paint this page and paint that out. We could um, do some collage elements over it. We could do our nice little word study that we did yesterday. So I think what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this marker that I used and make use of that as a framing element and just make a little bit wider frame here this is a nice teal color goes very well with that nice butterfly I think and just make myself a little bit wider frame around here So it doesn't look like I forgot what I was doing. And sometimes I do forget what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a good thing about being free in your studio. Is give yourself permission to make mistakes and make boo-boos. Because lots of times that's where I do my finest art. Is when I've made it what I think is a mistake initially. And I just let it go and flow. And lots of times I will discover something new along the way. Which is a good thing. So let me see what I've got here on this tabletop. I've still got some watercolors on here. So let me go ahead and just do some watercolor over this. And I'm probably going to do lots of other things on these pages. I'm just kind of showing you techniques up front and then we'll show you more finishing stuff as we get, as we get some of these um, new techniques out of the way. So what am I going to go with that teal? I think I'm going to go with this aqua color here. Clean up some of my mess from the other day. My daughter was like, oh no. She commented on that video I made the other day. It was like, I cannot have my art supplies looking like that. So some people are messier than others. I guess I would be in the messy messy side of things but sometimes it does bother me too to have my supplies messed up heavens I've got years full of beautiful papers I have collected in places from all over the world that I just am saving I don't know why I'm saving them for something else but that's gonna that's gonna diminish this year too because I promise I am going to use my stash Ah, got some on the butterfly. We'll just have to embrace that, won't we? And paint over this. And I think I'm going to leave the top white for now. And I'm just going to make a couple of little passes over my nice little butterfly since I got some of that aqua watercolor over them. That's okay. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Dang it. I like it. So just play. It's all about playing and having fun and and getting in your studio and making things work. I have had so much fun these last few days. Not the pressure of making the videos every day, but the absolute joy of coming into this studio and 
thinking about what I'm going to do this day and actually doing it. I, I, I've gotten a lot done even in these three days because what happens that I find when I turn the video off is that I will stay in here. Uh, you know, set your timer for 20 minutes and when it rings, you can always choose to stay in here longer if you like. And I think the first day I was doing the video, I stayed in here for three different sessions of 20 minutes. So I worked for an hour that day and it seemed just like a few minutes to me. So anyway, that is our little portal for today. Let you get a close look at that. Isn't that fun? So I can't wait to come back tomorrow and see what I'm going to get into. And I would love, love, love to hear what you're into. If you want to comment beneath these videos, I post them to Facebook, to Creativa page, and it's C-R-E, the number 8, T-I-V-A. And I also post it on my Instagram at Rebecca E. Parsons. So there's two places you can. And once I get uh, in the habit and the ability, I'm going to load all these videos up to YouTube, too. But for right now, that's not happening. <laughs> as, I, as I continue figuring out how to make my daily creative practice work for me and fit into my life and fit into your life and fit everywhere. So just think about your daily creative practice and what you're going to do each day and what you're going to commit to and what you think you can do. The last thing in the world I want to happen is for you to start out gung-ho this first part of January, and then by the middle of March or June, you're like, I don't want to do this every day anymore. It's not about pressure. It's absolutely not about any kind of pressure. It is about the joy that you get by actually creating. So if you have to stop at the end of 20 minutes every day, stop. If that's the pressure, if you have to come in here two 10-minute sessions or four or five-minute sessions, whatever works for you is what is going to be joyful for you and that's going to be your personal daily ex practice that's what it's about is figuring out what your personal daily creative practice is going to look like not what mine looks like not what anybody else's looks like but what yours looks like so again this is Rebecca and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow right back here. May joy be with you all.